Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach, and I'm actually like pissed right now. <laughs> Before we start, 499 graphic novel. Uh, Narwhal is uh, prepping the print file right now. Rock and Roll Ninja graphic novel. I don't know why this is taking time to populate. It was already open before. Now I'm pissed about two things. Uh, so um, this is a book home. Uh, it's uh, from Image Comics, and it is uh, racist propaganda. Uh, it's actually racist to everyone. Uh, if you can, this is a book about um, uh, the asylum process of uh, in America. So just imagine what you think it is. And yes, you guessed literally every part of it. The two main characters uh, are both soulful saints. Every single white person is evil, but it actually gets worse <laughs> than that. I mean, you were correct. First of all, this is a book about the zero uh, tolerance policy for abuse of the asylum program that was instituted when Trump became president. You call the book Zero Tolerance, like home is just the gen most generic, boring story ever. So we start in Guatemala, which is very far away. The idea of asylum is that you've got some problems in your country and you need to get someplace safe. So uh, you uh, go to what would we, we would assume the nearest safe place. Uh, and uh, apparently it's the 1980s and there's just like wars everywhere. Like there's no place in Mexico to safe. No place. Not a single place. There's not a single place in Belize, El Salvador, Honduras. Nowhere. Nowhere in Central America. You can't go to Colombia. Nothing. Equally distant. No, no. Uh, so the only solution when you have a problem in Guatemala is America. Um, uh, I live literally in the town that this is set in. Um, in the area that it's set in, essentially. It's set for, you know, in the Reynosa McAllen area. And knowing people who work for customs, who work for border patrol, who work for local law enforcement, this is such bullshit. Like the whole thing is bullshit, racist propaganda. I saw this great thing. I forget where I saw it or I would share it. And it was, they were interviewing these uh, white college students about you know the uh, the need to have an ID card, and all of these white college students are like, well, you know, African Americans, it's it's more difficult for them, and it's not fair to expect them. Then they cut to like Harlem, and they're like, uh, do you know where the DMV is? And they're like, yeah, it's like 125th Street. They're like, do you have an ID? Everyone's like looking like, of course I have an ID. I'm an adult. I have an ID. Like, why would I not have an ID? The racist white college students who call themselves progressive. Think of black people as like simpletons, like DMV. Oh shit! Ah oh, shit! What? I'm already confused. And every single black person interviewed is like, "Yes, of course I have. I'm not five years old. Why would I not? Do you really think I can't figure out how to get ID?" The funny thing is, like, it seems like the average person, and I don't, I don't, I mean, I, I can point you in the direction of the DMV. I don't know the street it's on. Everyone was like, "Oh yeah, it's 125th and 8th Street." It's like. Oh. Y'all know this very well. Uh, so it literally seems like black people are more able to get ID cards than anyone else. But the, the racist liberal white people say it's impossible. So uh, they go over here. And uh, so they get from Guatemala to McAllen. 1,100 miles. 389 straight hours of walking, although they say it takes them a month because... They were able to find safe places to stop every single, for every night for 30 days, they could find a safe place to stop, but they couldn't live in any of those places. Um, this is, it's it's farcical. It is abs. there are legitimate reasons for asylum, but if you can walk 1100 miles safely, it feels like there are a lot of spots in between. It just feels like you're gaming the system. You know, you are trying to, and then when she, oh gosh, when she gets interviewed, it's it's even more ridiculous. So they walk from Guatemala, you know, in a bus and train, multiple ways of getting there. Planes, trains, and automobiles. Well, no planes. Um, and then they get to uh, the, uh, what do they call it? The land bridge, the international bridge, where you can legally apply for asylum, which they are doing. Except for they, they applied for asylum in this weird, like, magical way where for 30 days they were walking and nobody told them, hey, there's a new president. Hey, there's a new uh, policy. Hey, 
they're not just rubber stamping all the asylum applications like they used to. It used to, you know, in the last, you know, a uh, few years of uh, Obama, you would just say, oh, yeah, the president of Zimbabwe wants to throw me into a volcano. And they'd be like, okay, yeah, sure, stamp. Uh, make sure to show up to uh, this building in six months for a uh, hearing that you won't show up for. They're like, yeah, no problem. Uh, and then you know, they would let them into uh, America with very minimal processing. And that was just the way it was for years. And you can't tell me I'm lying because I get this straight from the horse's mouth. People who worked at customs during uh, George Bush, Obama, and Trump. And they told me all the different policies and they're constantly changing. So they get there and they're like, okay, we're applying. And of course, oh, who's the person who's interviewing? A racist white man who is 12 feet tall? Very, very large. Who's got some sort of like Aryan Brotherhood, like you work, this is a government job, they have standards, you don't get to show up with your Aryan Brotherhood, no uniform of course, and he's just like, names, they're like, uh, where are you coming from, he's like, do you speak English, no, no English, he's like, what, okay, freaking everyone at Customs speaks Spanish, it's almost, technically it's not a requirement, but your career is going to go absolutely nowhere. He got up to be a supervisor and he doesn't speak Spanish. This is ridiculous. This is racist propaganda. The people making this book are liars. This is not a confusion. This is not, oh, it's different places. You don't get to be a supervisor if you don't speak Spanish. It's literally impossible to do your job. And if you work there, because you're going to start entry level, you're going to be running the lanes, doing checkpoints. If you don't speak Spanish, you are less than useless. They'll put you on the, you know, the inside until you, you, you teach yourself or you take classes and you are not getting anywhere at customs if you don't speak Spanish. You know, working on the, you know, Mexican border. That is ridiculous. So he's like, we got another one who can't speak English. Deal with this, Umberto. He wouldn't say Umberto. He would say officer and then their last name. They would all be in uniform. Like, this is ridiculous. He's like, where are you from? He's like, oh, we're from Guatemala. We left everything behind to come here. The gangs, they were after my son. They were going to kill him. I'm sorry. What? Your son's like eight years old. Why were they going to kill him? Also, this is a neighborhood gang. They, she literally later describes it as a neighborhood gang. It's a neighborhood gang, not an international crime cartel. There are multiple cities in Guatemala. You can literally just move with your cousins anywhere. You could probably move to another part of the same city and be safe. No, this is... Now, later they say that, you know, oh, my husband was killed by the gang. No, this, this, this like, what is this? This is like something out of, like, Aesop's fable. It's like, and then the gang vowed to kill the firstborn of every generation. No, no. So then uh, they get put in, you know, to processing. They're like, okay, we got to process you. They're like, oh, wait, no, you don't just let us in with our very hard to believe story that a gang is going to follow my eight-year-old son and kill him anywhere except for America. If it was that easy to get into America, it would be just as easy for the gang to get into America to kill him. Like, nothing, you don't have any proof, and they don't have any paperwork. Again, they have no paperwork. That's why they get put into this processing center. So they get in there, and it's cold, and it's like, oh my gosh, it's cold, okay? It's cold lots of places. Most of my time in the military, as an American citizen, I was either burning hot or freezing freaking cold. We once, in 29 Palms, our housing was literally a shed. It was, well, it, no, it was like a row of like, um, uh, it was like those rental, you know, public storage, but not like the nice ones inside that are climate controlled. It was literally had, it had a, uh, what do you call it? Um, like a garage door. No heating, no ventilation. We had to like open the garage door like, you know, a foot every hour or so to get some fresh air in, some oxygen. So the great tragedy, uh, after being given shelter and food with a very sketchy story of applying for asylum and they have no paperwork is that it's cold and then they hand you blankets that they sit on. 
The blanket is not for sitting on. You wrap it around your shoulders and then you're warm. You were fucking handed a blanket. You're not here like, oh, it's so cold here. I'm shivering. You're sitting on the blanket. What the fuck? This is so racist. So it's racist against white people by showing every single white person as being just evil. And it's racist against Guatemalans for showing them to be so stupid that they sit on blankets instead of wrapping themselves in them. I am so cold in my shorts and my short sleeve shirt. You were handed a fucking blanket. You were handed multiple blankets. Here's him handing you two blankets. One. Okay, first of all, you're the adult. If your son is freezing cold, give him your blanket. Just put your blankets on. Idiots. So she's like, um, uh, things have changed. You haven't heard? Somehow they walked for a month toward America. And nobody had a cell phone. Nobody called home and got the news. Nobody read a newspaper. N no. What happens is, and my buddies who work in customs tell me this shit. When the law is changed, people know it's not a magic spell. Whatever is told to happen doesn't automatically happen the second the president says it. First of all, that's got to be, you know, uh, disseminated to the workers who are in a union job who say, oh, that's a lot of extra work or that's a change. We don't want to do that. So then they banter the union rep and the freaking supervisors, managers and directors. They banter for days, weeks or months about the new changes. Then they got to get instituted. Then the officers don't want to follow them. So then they got to get counseled about it. So whenever there's a new change, instead of there being less people, there becomes a whole flood of people. Everyone who was bum rushing through would know this stuff. That's why they were trying to get through. They're trying to get through before the new directive actually gets enforced. You've probably been on the road for a while, but there's a new president and things change to say the least. Uh, so then they talk about that they separate the adults and the children because if you're an American citizen and you're whatever, you get picked up for warrants, do, do you want your child going into the prison with you? No, you want them separate. You get a separate facility for children, a separate facility for adults. This is basic stuff that happens in every country in the entire world. Um, so they're like, uh, we left Guatemala almost a month ago, and I didn't hear anyone talking about changes on our trip up north. Bullshit. All anyone would talk about in this situation were the changes. All you're doing is like, hey, did you call home? Yeah. Oh, they say Trump got elected. Oh, wait, wait, no, Trump got elected. And then there's two months before he become. You didn't know that Trump was president, but there's two months in between the election and the inauguration. And it took you one month. So you didn't know anything was going to change. Like you literally don't know the president of the country you're moving to. This is bullshit. And the people who work the border, they have to deal with this shit every single day. Being lied to. Bullshit stories that a mentally challenged person wouldn't believe. You're like, you didn't know Trump was president. Oh, no, I don't read the news. You, you were moving to a country and you don't even know who the president is. I just assumed it was going to be Obama for a third time. You think that American presidents are just can be presidents for three times. No. Your story is not believable. Also, hey, they're adult man. Why don't you give your jacket and your hat to the kid or tell him to wrap the blankets? There's blank. You're literally resting against the blankets. Oh, my God. I just looked at it. They wrapped their bags in the blankets. So their bags are warm, but they're like, oh, my gosh. So then uh, they, you know, they're like, okay, we got to get you inspected. And literally every single thing is shown as being horrifying. They're literally like, hey, we need to get you a physical. They're like, oh my God, these white Americans. How could they inspect people for, you know, uh, their health? How can they do that? So then they, he's like, uh, uh, you know, you're being separated. You're being processed. So then they're like, uh, uh, can we go back to Guatemala? You're just going to walk back. I thought you were applying. Wait. Okay, I'm sorry. Because your whole story is bullshit. So now you're, you're told that you and your son are going to be separated for a few days while you're processed. And you say, okay, fine, we'll just go back to Guatemala. 
You literally said that your son would be murdered if you didn't leave Guatemala. Now it's safe to go back because you don't want to deal with the mild inconvenience of being processed for a few days? So he's like, no, you, you've already started the process. You're in the process. So then, hours later, they figure out how to use one blanket, even though they both have a blanket. So then uh, they're like, um, uh, oh, we need to uh, process... Uh, this uh, woman, we need to separate the child, and of course she's breastfeeding. At li literally, and she goes, uh, "Do we wait until she's after she's done?" And then the racist white guy's like, "What do you mean? Grab the damn kid now!" Of course, it's the black woman officer. This this is just racist as fuck. Like this is so fucking racist. And she's like begging on her knees, like, "What you you want a baby? To, like, bad stuff happens to kids, you know, in these." facilities you you separate them from the adults who are going to do the bad stuff you're not taking my son i said no and then it's vague whether she just like falls or like he throws her or something like that there's some blood on her forehead i guess he throws her or smacks her it's not very well drawn so then uh, she just starts screaming and crying and then they take them to a facility for children um, because this uh, asylum process gets constantly abused. We've seen right here, even in this, you know, hagiography showing the woman as being a saint, her story is not remotely believable. This international neighborhood cartel was going to follow her son everywhere in the world to murder her except for America. Oh, but if you have to go through three days of processing, Screw it, I'm going to go back to Guatemala? Like, what the hell? You don't have paperwork? Why don't you have paperwork? I'm talking about, like, they don't have IDs. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, so she asked about her son. He's like, you know, you've been separated. We're processing you separately. Um, please, we're here to claim asylum because the neighborhood gang murdered my son, murdered my husband, and wanted my son next. Okay, so you already changed your story. First you said they were going to kill your son. Now they say probably most likely they want to recruit your son. These are two totally different things. I may not be the most educated person here, but coming to this country and asking for asylum is legal, is it not? Why are we being treated like criminals? Well, you're not being treated like criminals, but you are being treated like your extremely suspicious and ever-changing story is hard to believe. And it's not just you. It's tens of thousands of people a year. It's hundreds of thousands of people every year who are abusing the asylum process. Your story is not believable. Okay, so uh, then we got the, you know, the racist white guy glaring at her. I take it you haven't seen the news. The news? We just spent the last month tra traveling from Guatemala. We didn't have time to watch the news. Okay, you're not traveling 24 hours a day. Their cell phones. This is set in 2017. Everybody has a cell phone. They, they, the, the way they describe Central America is so racist. Uh, I can, con I can confirm for you. There are cell phone towers in Mexico. I can literally see them. People in Mexico have the ability to read news. There are newspapers. There are news channels. You, when you're traveling, you're not tra traveling. Tw I mean, you're, you're sitting, you're bored. You're going to check your phone. They have internet in Mexico. Trust me. So then she starts freaking out, slamming her hand on the desk. Uh, Tell this woman to answer the questions now or we'll send her back across the border. I just want my son back. Uh, so then they cut to this. I mean, this is just infuriating. And they're going to manipulate people. They're like, oh, you're a racist if you don't believe all of our racist propaganda. Also, this is just completely filled with lies. So they take them to, uh, you know, a place right outside of San Antonio where they are professionally, you know, taken care of. It, here in this area, they started complaining about every single type of housing for um, unaccompanied children who crossed the border. Eventually, they rented an entire hotel. 
So they had nice hotel rooms, they could control the thermostat, they could watch TV, and they still protested that because it's not about the asylum protest. They just want open borders. They want anyone in any country to be able to enter America for any reason at any time. So we got a white person, so of course he's racist as hell. Um, and then when they get into the uh, the kids' facility, they're they're being fed. Look, everyone's got food. Everyone's got food. So then uh, they're like, okay, they, they tell them the rules. No food in the uh, the housing area. Why? Because they don't want it infested with bugs. That's what's going to happen if it becomes infested with bugs. Let's flash back to the cover of the book. Trash all over the ground when people are walking their way to America. If you have that inside of a closed facility, there's going to be massive and infestations of bugs so they have rules you can't just you know have all of your food everywhere you have it we're gonna feed you and then you're gonna and then he's literally told by one of the other kids leave it you'll get in trouble if you bring any food with you he still takes it he gets caught they're like hey you got food in there you're not like we literally told you and your homie told you like he's like uh I was hungry. It's like, you literally just ate. You literally just ate. So then he's like the most racist. He like throws them in there. He, he, they go into isolation apparently for days or weeks. Um, and then he's got these tattoos, which I think are supposed to imply he's like a white supremacist. He says, uh, this isn't the same country you saw on TV back in whatever shithole country you come from. We're taking it back from you people. Here's the ironic part. This racist guy with the tattoos is as racist as the racists making this book. Central America exists in the same year as you liberal white progressives and everyone else who approved this. They have cell phones, they have newspapers, people have ID, people have the ability to get ID if they lost ID. All of this is racist propaganda. It's racist against white people by showing all of them as evil it's racist against hispanics as showing them as hapless hopeless helpless mental deficients trust me there's internet in mexico there's internet in guatemala a neighborhood gang is not going to follow your son everywhere in south central america anywhere in south america to murder him that's a threat they make if you stay in the neighborhood. Yes, you probably do need to move out of the neighborhood. Yes, it would probably be even better if you move to another town in Guatemala. This neighborhood gang is not going to follow you all over Guatemala like some sort of plot out of an action movie. This book is racist. It is filled with lies. It is open borders propaganda. The people who made it, the creators of this book are racist against white people, against Hispanics, against basically anyone that is in this book. We get one black person, of course they're a complete like, oh, I'm not sure what to do. Rip the child away from its mother. Stupid, stupid racist dribble, the entire thing. Nobody here cares about the people they care about. They just care about their politics looking woke. There are actual, safe immigration and asylum application processes. You're not entitled to be approved. Millions of people get into America legally using the process. Here's a great way to make the process easier. Have ID. You might say, oh, I had to take my son and run out of my neighborhood and I left my purse. Okay, I guarantee you, you got a cousin two cities over so you go two cities over and you go hey the gangs were after my son i lost my id i need to get more you know id i guarantee you in guatemala there's a process to get your id then when you show up you go hey here's my id they go oh that's going to make this a lot easier because we have an embassy in guatemala we can contact people we can contact people you know in your neighborhood they're like oh yeah they're in trouble with the gangs it's really bad well, can they go to another city? Well, kind of, but that gang has branches in that city as well. And the husband, like, really pissed them off. So are they going to just, like, shoot the kid? They're like, mm, it's not good for the family. 
so they're going to say, okay, yeah, we are approving your asylum. Now we just get this ever-changing story. They won't follow even simple rules of, like, don't bring food into the area where everyone sleeps. You don't know how to use a blanket? This is all bullshit. It's bullshit racist propaganda. It's freaking disgusting. So I'm going to wrap this one up. Wow. I'm going to go take my baby aspirin. I can feel my high blood pressure. So uh, not a recommend. Uh, racist as the day is long, uh, the creators of this book, liars, liars, propaganda. Oh, Jesus. And I thought Image was, you know, uh, I've, I've been hearing from people that are like, you know, Image kind of quietly kind of went back to like, hey, let's just make books that sell. This woke shit is not selling. Because at, you know, Image, you've got to fund it yourself. Um, and then Image will take their cut. So, uh, Disgusting, racist, lying propaganda made by a bunch of racists, rubber stamped by people who probably are subconsciously racist against Hispanics. It's like, well, you know, the Hispanics, they don't know how to do things so well. So they're not really, they don't know what paperwork is. They don't know what ID cards are. Uh, they forget things. So they're, they're going to say, oh, the gang wants to murder my son. And then five minutes later, they're, they're going to tell another officer, uh, the Gang wants to recruit my son. What are they going to shoot him and then recruit him? Stupid. Oh my gosh. And this stuff has real life implications on border towns, uh, border states. But no, let's just have open borders for everyone because um, uh, SJWs are as racist as the white progressives who think that black people can't figure out how to go to the DMV and get a driver's license. Stupid. Anyway, buy my books. Four ninety nine graphic novel, rock and roll ninja graphic novel, and I will have more new comic reviews up all this weekend. Thanks, bye.